What's up everybody, 915 Mang here, doing a little bit of drone action today. This is the only drone I can afford, and uh, I'm going to be droning with my son at his school uh, kite day. Some of you uh, check it out, this is old school. Some of you guys don't know about old school, but uh, this is what's up guys. So let's go ahead and talk about the 180 gallon reef. One of the things that I like the most is the natural sunlight. Uh, getting some fresh air in the house and the uh, sunlight came through the house. But I got some bad news to tell you. My, you can see my yellow tang on top swimming sideways. Uh, and I think it's because of the antheas. I introduced uh, antheas. I actually had them in my little observation tank. And um, there was a total of three brand new antheas that I entered into the tank. The very next day, um, I introduced them at night. Uh, my hippo tang had some white spots. My powder brown, he was okay. My nasso had some white spots. And then the very next day, one of the antheas uh, died. The interesting thing about antheas for me is uh, they seem kind of uh, aggressive. The one that I had in the tank was uh, bullying all the other ones. You know, he was checking them. And uh, I don't know if that's what caused the death because before I moved them over to the 180, uh, they were all eating. Um, it's pretty crazy to me. It's real sad that I lost my yellow tang, but uh, I'm just telling you guys because um, I should have took some more time. I should have listened to the wife, and uh, the wife right away told me that I should have took like at least three to four weeks of them being in the 20 gallon long. But I'm telling you this, and I'm sharing this with you so you guys don't do the uh, same mistakes as me. Take your time, guys. Don't be like me. Um, I, and also another thing I want to add is that I thought one of the antheas was going to die. And uh, to this day, he's still swimming around. Uh, what's kind of weird, I know, um, what's kind of weird to me is that one of them hangs out on the bottom of the tank, just like kind of sits there. And then I try to get my uh, my uh, grips, my Eheim gripper, grabber, whatever you want to call it. I try to get it down there, and then this dude starts swimming around like if nothing, and he hasn't died yet. Um, so I guess he's a, a fighter and he's going to make it. I do want to go ahead and tell you that all my fish are doing good right now. So far, the only fish that I've lost was the yellow tang, which really sucks. But I'm going to take my time, and I'm not going to add any more fish into the system for quite a while to make sure that they all uh, make it out. I did go to the LFS, but the reason I went to the LFS is to pick up some chocolate chip starfish. Um, I The reason I do the uh, chocolate chip starfish is to feed my harlequin shrimp. And as you can see, I have uh, plenty of zoas. This is my little zoa garden. It will start growing out hopefully in the near future. I'm going to grow all these suckers out and uh, get a whole bunch of different other kind of zoas. Uh, this is my uh, top-down view. I have all the flow off except for the return. And on my return, it's a very slow uh, flow. Um, the reason why is I I haven't uh, got a new one is because I want to get a DC pump. Um, but uh, it's doing pretty cool, you know, for the meantime. Uh, no noise, which is good. And really, really slow flow in my sump. Another thing I want to share with you, because uh, I'm showing you my tank, is uh, I do have uh, some cyano. I have a lot of cyano issues. The reason why I have cyano is because I've been feeding like crazy, guys. I've been doing two cubes in the morning and two cubes in the evening. One cube of mysis and one cube of brine shrimp. Uh, I've been soaking them in the selcon and garlic. And speaking of garlic, I actually had a little glass bottle of garlic uh, bust all over my floor and uh, let me tell you that stuff stinks um, so I immediately picked it up swept it up and mopped it up uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the Kent Marine garlic extreme uh, just uh, concentrated and it's in a dropper form form so you don't actually have to uh, use the garlic uh, but that the Walmart garlic it did work I was going to keep using it until I was out, but um, you know what? I dropped it all over the floor. Now that I'm not going to be adding uh, any more fish for for quite a bit, I do want to go ahead and uh, probably start selling some corals. 
you know, I have lots of corals that I can frag. And I'll probably do some frag packs locally. Um, those of you who are on the El Paso Reef Club, I'll probably be posting up on there. So look out for that. And uh, that way you guys can support me on uh, getting a brand new smoker. After I get my smoker, I do plan on getting some more corals. I plan on getting, uh, you know, just a couple or more orders. Um, well, what I'm really looking for is some euphilias, one of those peach hammers, and a different kind of uh, frog spawn, not frog spawn, but uh, torches. I'd really like to get a nice gold torch and uh, just go from there. Some type of euphilia garden be sweet, but uh, of course more zoas. I, I am a zoa guy. Not too long ago, I placed a uh, pretty nice order on uh, from a seller on Reef to Reef. I bought a whole bunch of varieties of zoas, and they are actually starting to grow now. They're starting to get like one to two heads and um, baby polyps, of course. But the bad thing is I have a uh, cyano on them. So what I do is I get my turkey baster, and I go ahead and uh, baste the stuff off. I also watched a video from uh, Tidal Gardens, which most of the information... You know, he did cover it, and uh, he talked about using ChemiClean, uh, carbon, all kinds of stuff. And uh, one thing that I haven't done is use uh, ChemiClean. Now, the reason why a lot of people say don't use these ChemiCleans until you find the source of the problem is, you know, it's, it is true. But the thing is, I already know what the source of the problem is, is I'm loading my tank up with phosphates from the cubes of uh, food, two cubes a day um twice once in the morning and then once in the afternoon evening when i get home um that's how much i was feeding but since then i've cut that down um i'm only feeding one cube at night and uh so i'll be able to control my uh, phosphates a little bit i'm not running any uh gfo or anything like that and i'm not even running a uh, carbon yet on this tank um i haven't been running carbon or gfo since it's uh, been set up the reason why is I haven't uh, had a nice reactor. I haven't um, set them up yet. I absolutely do have a couple of reactors, but I want to go ahead and try to get a nicer reactor to do that. I did use some uh, phosphate RX, which is another thing I want to kind of quickly cover. The night before my yellow tank died, I used that phosphate RX. I used about 18 drops, and then uh, that's when I noticed that uh, my yellow tank was dead was uh, swimming sideways the next day so I don't know if that had anything to do with it but as you can see here's a uh, cyano in my tank you know it's from over nutrients it's not because I don't have a whole lot of flow in here I mean that might be a problem with it but I did pick up some uh, ChemiClean and I picked up this ChemiClean at uh, Petco because I had bought a few things from Petco where they sent me a $20 uh, discount a coupon and I actually went there and I actually got this for free because I used my uh, coupon so thank you for that and as you notice it will tell you to uh, you can use your protein skimmer and you can adjust it and you need a bubble stone and all that good stuff so what I did is I turned up my flow on my power heads and I kept my protein skimmer I knew this was going to happen I knew that the skimmer was going to overflow but I didn't know it was going to happen that fast but the reason I kept my protein skimmer on was because it adds so much oxygen to your tank by all those, you know, bubbles that it creates. This was also the first time that I ever used ChemiClean. And uh, I, the recommended dosage is one level scoop for every 10 gallons of uh, tank water that you have. And I way, went way below that. I went uh, five scoops only. You know, I didn't want to do the 18 scoops since I've never used this before. I knew that uh, it wasn't going to be the full dosage, but I still did the uh, water change. The water change is going to get rid of whatever's in your tank, and it's also going to help uh, get rid of excess nutrients. So I kind of did a combination right there. Hopefully this stuff works, even though I didn't do the uh, recommend dosage, which would have been 18 scoops for my tank. Uh, I did do the 50, 50 gallon dosage, so... We'll see how it goes because I didn't really have too bad of a cyano issue. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching. You guys have a good one. Take care.